Building Java using Gradle on Jenkins. Why? Because a developer needs to get their code somehow into production. What that mystery is, is the big question mark in the center for how to do that. When trying to answer that question, we come up with terms like CI, CD, also CD, and DevOps. But what do they mean? Continuous integration starts with every developer on a team committing to a shared mainline, the same branch on a daily basis, at a minimum. Each one of those commits then triggers an automated build and test. And if that build and test happens to fail, it's fixed quickly, preferably within 10 minutes. The next step has to do with continuous delivery. And that's the process of using deployment automation to take that work from dev and get it into production, noting that at some point in that process, there is some type of manual intervention. Somebody saying, yes, this is OK to go. I verified it, press the button, and go. Continuous deployment, however, is where there is no stop in the process. There is a complete uninterrupted path from getting code from dev into production. This requires a very high maturity CI and CD process. This is also how your leading players, such as Netflix, are deploying to production, for example, 100 or so times a day. Throughout all of this, you have DevOps. DevOps, simply put, is when a team owns their work into production meaning a developer makes a code change, gets it into production, is also responsible for maintaining it there. This means from an end-to-end -end perspective, developers own their work into production. I like to think of CI, CD in terms of a pyramid when it comes to the infrastructure. At the very bottom, you have your infrastructure and underlying runtime environment, which is responsible for hosting your CI platform. Your CI platform is where your jobs or pipelines run. This is going to be something like a Jenkins or a TeamCity or GitHub Actions. Above that, you have a source control system. This is where your code lives. The CI platform is going to pull from source control in order to find what needs to be built. And that's where above that we have our build system. This is a technology like NPM or Maven or Gradle, which is used to take source code in the given language and turn it into some type of artifact or deliver it in some manner. And at the very top, we of course have our language. That's gonna determine what we're building, how we're archiving it, and then also how we get it into whatever runtime environment it needs to function inside. In the case of this course, we're looking at a very specific set of selections within inside this pyramid. At the lowest level, for the purposes of running locally, I'm using a combination of Docker and Docker Compose. This is just for an easy way to run Jenkins in a container on its own in a way where I can bring it up and down and if I mess it up, I can easily restore it from a point when it worked. Jenkins is the underlying CI platform we're talking about here. It's what's going to be used to make pipelines and show how they work and how jobs and pipelines are different. And above that, I'm using Git as the source control mechanism as specifically hosted on github.com. For the build technology, meaning turning Java into a jar file, I'm using Gradle. And then obviously the top level is the language I'm using, which is Java. How? With lots of working examples. Every aspect of this course comes with a GitHub repository that has both instructions and working code for how all this functions. From generating SSH keys and getting it to work on github.com, to how to create a pipeline as code using a Jenkins file running inside a Jenkins container. What's covered in this course? It starts with the basic infrastructure needed to run a local development environment. That starts with Git via github.com, which is going to include generating an SSH key so that you can clone via Git SSH the example code bases. Next, we're going to set up both Docker and Docker Compose which is a means of running container images locally. Uh, finally, then we're going to move on to running Jenkins itself as a Docker container via Docker Compose. This will give you an environment which you can experiment with, save your changes locally, and if things get bad, you can always start over again from scratch. The second section has to do with building Java. In this case, we're gonna go over the basics of building Java, how to take Java files, turn them into class files, and package those class files into jar files. This is important because all Java build technologies do this behind the scenes. Next, we're going to move into the world of Gradle, and specifically the Java plugin, which is going to handle all that magic of building Java for you. This will include the introduction of unit testing as well. 
Then we're going to move into actually code coverage. So there's a Jococo plugin for Gradle that you can use to generate code coverage information as a part of your build process and then show how you can implement a quality gate based off of code coverage. Next, we're going to introduce the PMD plugin for static code analysis along with explaining what that means and also introduce a quality gate that won't allow you to add any more common coding issues to that code base. Finally, we're going to take all this work and we're going to use it to build that JAR file and publish it to a Maven repository. The final section deals with bringing it all together. We're going to start with the basics of a Jenkins freestyle job, installing some supporting plugins, and getting it all working end to end. Then we're going to move away from the freestyle job and use what's called a scripted pipeline. This is the first variation of a pipeline as code that will do the same thing as the freestyle job, except that it's something as stored in the source control. And finally, we're going to go with the preferred approach, which is to use a declarative pipeline. This is a pipeline as code that sits in your code base, but that also works across multiple branches.